Hey friends. So for today's video, we are going to talk about my record collection. <laughs> now, if you've been with me for a few years, I feel like I did a record collection video a few years ago, but I haven't done one since then. And since then I have accumulated um, a handful, more than a handful, I've accumulated a lot. So we're gonna talk about my record collection. We're gonna go through my entire record collection. So grab a, a snack and let's just get going. I'll try not to go into like detail about each of these cause there's a lot, but we're just gonna go through all of them. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, I have Algiers newest album, uh, The Underside of Power. This came out in 2017, oh God. This is a good record. I've talked about songs off of it for my song of the day multiple times. They are a great band. I highly recommend them. If you like loud, angry, there's like aspects of punk, but also aspects of like soul and gospel stuff. It's very cool. I like them. I have the Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse color picture vinyl. I was so fucking happy that I bought this, that I found this at a record store that I could actually like see in person. Oh, it's so beautiful. The soundtrack is flawless. This movie is flawless. Highly recommend watching Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It just further proves that Sony can make a Spider-Man movie. That doesn't suck. <laughs> Another one that I bought, I think I bought this on record store day. This is Highly Suspect's last record. Y'all need to fucking label your shit better. Um, I think they have a new record that's coming out soon. So that'll be exciting. Now we have some friends, Ravenna Woods. This is their newest record, Disappearing Someone. This is the first one that I've owned. Well, actually I own an EP. The first full length from these boys that I own that's, rec that's vinyl. It's absolutely beautiful. I love them so much as humans, as people. Listen to the whole thing. It's, it's great. I have the new Local Natives record that they put out last year. Uh, Violet Street. I guess this is LP4, yeah. I like this one better than the, the one they put out before this. One is still my favorite. Two is good. Four is good. Three is not as good. Um, this one I actually found at farmer's market, flea market thing. This is The Killers Hot Fuss. The best Killers album. And it's a bright blue and it's so pretty. I was so happy that I found this because this is actually the, I believe the um, European release because it has glamorous indie rock and roll on it, which I didn't know about that song until I went and saw The Killers live the first time. I was like, what song is this? This isn't on the record. What? And then I heard it and I was like, oh, this is like one of my favorite killer songs. What the fuck? So I'm glad I have this because I have the CD as well. I did a whole video years ago talking about my CD collection too. I definitely don't really own any more CDs now. So there's that. I have Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass because it was a dollar and I wanted it. It's hilarious to listen to. It's a great one to just throw on when nobody is expecting it. And then you just hear this like trumpet. <laughs> And it's hilarious. Anybody who's a record collector, if you ever see a Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass at a record store, a secondhand record store, holy shit, buy it. Like, it's so good. I have the latest Death Valley Girls release. I bought this last year. Ooh, this one's also, oh my God, it's so pretty. It's so beautiful. They played on the show that I work on and I bought this back when they were here back in, was it May? Yeah, it was May when they were here in town. Such a good band, holy shit. Such a good band. And the artwork is beautiful and the record is beautiful. Oh. Another buddy of mine, buddies, I guess, um, Duke Evers' most recent release. This is uh, Dreams and Desires that are common to youth. The title's a little long-winded, but it's pink. pink it's so pretty this is another local band if you like kind of dancey psychedelic rock you probably like these guys and they're also like some of the nicest dudes nicest guys they sent this to me just to have because they were also on my show like they're just it was just like thanks for being you and i was like no thanks thank you guys 
Oh, I've talked this about talked about this one on my channel before. Got signed. This is Cumulus's Comfort World. This Alex put out two years ago, I think. It's a great record. Highly recommend it if you like singer songwriter. Really lovely, earnest vocals and uh, just good songs. Love you guys. Uh, <laughs> this is Noah Gunderson's uh, live version of White Noise when he played it on KEXP. This I think was a record store day release specifically, like a year year or two ago. Glad I have this. I love Noah. He's got a show coming up next weekend that I'm super psyched for. Buy that one on vinyl. I own the last three Noah records on vinyl. This one's also clear, which is very cool. I have an unopened Weezer album that my uncle got for me last year for Christmas. This is the white album. I haven't even listened to it yet. I know I'm a terrible person. I have two records that I feel like everybody should own if you have an extensive record collection. I have Goodbye Yellow Brick Road from Elton John. This was also a gift from my uncle. The artwork in here is absolutely beautiful. There's like booklets and shit. It's like this really big, oh, that's the thing I love about buying physical music is that you get to see all the rest of the graphic art, like the design that goes into it. And I love that stuff so much. Oh. And then another one that I feel like everybody should own. Where are you? Fleetwood Max Rumors, because there were way too many of these in print for not everybody to just fucking have one by default. I feel like if you just like start collecting records, you'll just eventually find this, even if you don't remember buying it. Like, it's just like a, a thing that like, oh, everybody has this. I have Spoon's Gimme Fiction. I love Spoon. Spoon is one of my favorite bands of all time. I saw Spoon for the first, well, I saw Britt Daniel from Spoon for the first time like 10 years ago, almost exactly, at a little thing in Portland with some friends of mine. This one has My Mathematical Mind, I Summon You, Beast and Dragon Adored. I turn my camera on. Ooh, this, is this my favorite Spoon record? I don't know. It also has very weird artwork. I've met them once by some crazy happenstance. I got uh, randomly put on a, like a after party guest list at a show once. Don't know how, but it happened. Um, I have Simon and Garfunkel's Sounds of Silence. This one, I think I also found it at flea market, something, maybe. I've kept the plastic intact just because it keeps everything nice and Simon and Garfunkel. A classic, you know? Moving in a completely different direction, we have FKA Twigs. <laughs> this was her EP, I think. Yeah, this was an EP. The artwork on it is mind-bogglingly cool. It's just like, look at that. Like her hand is like through her face. Like the coolest, Twigs is so cool. You can always tell when something was like pressed on really nice vinyl when it's just like heavy, you know? And this is nice. I love the artwork. I would just put this up in a frame. Like, it's that cool. Okay, now we're getting to some stuff. Ooh, more friends. I have my buddy's new axe eyes. I actually need to listen to this more. This is very like industrial type, progressive, electronic stuff. It's very hard to describe their music. It's very loud and I mean, loud industrial electronic makes sense. The artwork is super neat and cool. It makes, it, it just, it, it, it makes sense for the music. Yeah, new axe eyes, very good. I think probably my favorite track off here is, I mean, Snowden is fucking dope. If I will try and list all of these in the description, try being the operative term, because I have I have a lot. So if I forget any, forgive me, please. But yeah, New Axe Eyes, they're a local group. I used to live with one of them. Uh, and then, my goodness, nobody puts any fucking record titles on the front anymore. That's the part that annoys me. But again, this one's pink. It's so pretty tie-dye millennial pink. Of course I wanted it. The artwork on this is also super cool. There's this pretty like straightforward rock and roll stuff. It's got some like synthy dancey parts in it and this is gonna be a mess to clean up later. Fuck. Um, probably my favorite record, maybe of all time. Well, it's a toss up between this one and another one. Um, this is White Lighter from Typhoon and this has probably gotten the most where like the most listens out of it just because I love it that much. Typhoon 
This album particularly, I feel like I've talked about on several occasions on my channel. There's a whole like backstory to it and everything. And it's just, this album has a very special place in my soul. Like I've said in the past that if I were to get a tattoo of like album art, it would be this moth. That's how much it means to me. I have my one and only Foles album, which I feel like I need to rectify that. I need to buy the new one. This is What Went Down, which is the one with Mountain at My Gates was on this record. Mountain at My Gates, Snake Oil, Knife in the Ocean. Ooh, Knife in the Ocean is so good too. Birch Tree, this is this is a really good record. I feel like I, I, I've I never encountered a bad Foles album. They're just different, but they're all good in their own way, you know? This one I got really into um, because of my last roommate before my sister, my, my friend Sean. And then when I worked at Hot Topic, my boss also listened to a lot of Foles. So I had a very cool boss. Ugh. I got some more Spoon. This is Hot Thoughts. Again, more artwork I would just put on my fucking wall. I was gonna take inventory one of these days of like all the vinyls that I have that are just not black. This one, do I like this better than Gimme Fiction? I don't know. Like I said about the Foles record, I haven't encountered bad Foles albums. I haven't encountered bad Spoon albums. I have so many of them. <laughs> Hot Dots, Whisper I'll Listen to Hear It. Can I Sit Next to You? Oh, I Ain't the One. It's so good. I Ain't the One. I have Y Oaks Shriek. This. I haven't listened to that much. It has not gotten nearly that much love, but I need to. What color are you? I bet you're a weird color. No, just, just black, nothing crazy. I like Wyoke a lot. I've seen them like twice, I think. Yeah, it's a good album. Um, Most of the bands that you might not know, um, if I'm going through things like quickly, most of them are gonna be some form of indie rock. <laughs> uh, otherwise I will mention it. Um, I have Adele's 25. This was a gift. This, I'll tell a quick story. This was an album that I got for Christmas four years ago, and it came out at a very opportune time. Opportune also meaning just fucking heartbreaking. Uh, <laughs> you know, it happens. And I listened to this a lot during that time, and I was feeling all the feels. This is good. Oh, the memes it spawned. Um, I have the districts. Flourish and the Spoil. This one I bought at, did I buy it at Sasquatch? I don't think I actually bought it at Sasquatch. Oh, this is a pretty color. Um, I didn't buy it at Sasquatch, but I bought it because of Sasquatch. This is like the coolest color. It looks like chlorine water. Like, look at that. So pretty, it's gorgeous. I love this band. I think they're from Philly somewhere. Maybe they're from Maryland, I don't remember, but. I really like this band. They're very good. And one of my other favorite albums of all time, we have Menomina's Minds. I have two Menomina records in here somewhere. This one is again, like the heftiest fucking vinyl itself. Like the, the actual record is so heavy and there's two of them. Menomina put out some weird music and I contribute a portion of my love for weird music to Menomina. I just wish they were still making music together. <laughs> I have my favorite Local Natives album, Gorilla Manor. Yeah, I love Local Natives. Fucking love them. They're great. They're beautiful. They make wonderful harmonies. And Taylor Rice has a perfect mustache. The end. This was another one that came out at that opportune heartbreaking moment. This is Pop Etc's Souvenir. And this I got signed by all of the boys except Chris. And this actually, like, Pop Etc. used to be known as the Morning Benders, and that band was one of the first bands I ever saw live. They opened for We Are Scientists the first time I saw We Are Scientists, and I was like, I really like this band. They seem really fun. They write really cute songs, and they're cute boys. <laughs> and so I followed their career, and then they changed their band name because it was brought to their attention that Morning Bender and like Bender was used in a derogatory way in the UK, and they're like, we don't want to be that so they changed their name to pop etc the record they put out before this i wasn't as a huge of a fan of part of it was because i was so in love with the album before that and th that first pop etc record was such a departure that i didn't know how to feel about it this one on the other hand went back to some of that stuff that i loved so much about the second album and 
It's so good. When I saw them play last, Chris was like very sick. And so they didn't actually get to finish their entire set. And I didn't get to like say hello and be like, I love you, <laughs> you know? But yeah, this one, please don't forget me, Vice. Ooh, Vice is such a bop. What am I becoming? This album slaps. It slaps. It's so good. Such an underrated band. Oh, here's the actual version of White Noise from Noah Gunderson. And look, the record is white. Wow. God, it's so fucking pretty. It's like tie-dyed white. It's like the coolest. Ugh. Noah is another person that just like does this like cool album artwork. He's just like a wonderful creative genius. Swear to God. Also, one of the nicest dudes. Um, I have Pause. Pause album, No Grace. Ooh, this one's good. This is a band that also opened for We Are Scientists many years ago, and then I fell in love with. They're a Scottish punk band, and I love them so much. <laughs> they got into it. They got into it with Morrissey once, though. That was pretty funny. Morrissey didn't want anybody else to be playing in the immediate vicinity of him because he's such a fucking diva. And almost got their show canceled at, like, a venue in San Francisco. Fuck Morrissey. This is uh, one of my favorite albums. This, I had this on CD, and this is one of the first records I bought as a vinyl because I was like, I need to own these certain records on vinyl because I made this arbitrary rule for myself because they're my favorites. And this is a Rilo Kylie album that came out in 2004. This is Jenny Lewis's old band. If you like Rilo Kylie, this was like the age and the era of like the OC soundtrack. I have... This one is Young Fathers. Ooh, this album is so good. Oh my God. Young Fathers, I also contribute to my old roommate. He listened to them a ton and got me interested in them. Uh, Shame is amazing. Rain or Shine, still running. This, this is a great album. There's like aspects of hip hop and like kind of like tribal influences as well. And then like punk influences and it's all very British and I love it. Oh, I have a Mazer live at KEXP. This was just given to me by this guy. They're not a band anymore, but this is a thing I have. Um, I have a Rain Wolf EP single. Well, I guess it's a two, Are You Satisfied and In The Dark. This was signed by Jordan and Stitch, actually. The dude, one of the dudes that was in this band also played with this guy. Rain Wolf whom I feel like more people know about now because he came out of like his dumb arbitrary hiding for no reason. This I bought from him probably six, seven years ago. And this was number 282 out of a thousand. And I'm glad I have it because if he keeps going, he'll get fucking famous. He's gonna get real fucking famous and he's amazing. Puts on a great show. He's like the nicest guy. Like if you could imagine the most friendly Canadian stereotype, Rain Wolf is that. <laughs> I'm not joking. He's so nice. Yeah. Another local band, Deep Sea Diver. Ooh. This album, when this came out, oh man. It's another two, two record set. Notice Me, Wide Awake, Secrets. This is a really awesome album. If you like, I mean, Jessica used to play with the Shins. I'm trying to think of other people Jess used to play with, but this is a local band. The front woman, Jessica Dobson, um, is a fantastic guitar player, great songwriter. They're great. I love them. They're so good. Now we've found a Phoenix record finally. I was like, how have I not gotten to a Phoenix record? I own like four. This is It's Never Been Like That, which has It's Never Been Like That on there. And Napoleon says, Constellation Prizes, Long Distance Call. This one's awesome. I love Phoenix. I feel like I contribute my love of Phoenix to the same person who uh, got me into Spoon. Um, so if you like Spoon, you probably like Phoenix. If you don't know of either of them, highly recommend. I have I Love You Honey Bear by Father John Misty. Great fucking record. There, literally, I don't have anything to say about it. He's kind of an asshole, but he owns it. So like, and he's so much fun to photograph. Holy shit. <laughs> Another Spoon record. Ga, 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 ga. This was the first my first foray into Spoon's music, because this came out, like like right when this came out is when I started listening to Spoon. So like the underdog was all the rage. It was like the song of the, of the season. Don't Make Me a Target is really great. You Got Your Cherry Bomb. Don't you ever be done? This one's also great. 
Ghost of You Lingers. Ooh, the Ghost of You Lingers is such an underrated song. Oh boy, Spoon, ga 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 ga. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, I have another unopened Weezer record. Except this one I should open because I know I will listen to it. Um, it's the Blue Album, the best. Well, Pinkerton's the best one. Um, this is the second best one. Um, I'm one of those people, I know. Um, yeah, Weezer, Blue Album. The Crane Wife, The Decemberists. Artwork is beautiful. This weird, these fucking weirdos. Look at this, it's beautiful. It's so pretty. That's one thing I always loved about the Decemberists was like their album imagery was always so like cool, you know? Ooh, I have promises from the Morning Benders. This is an EP, $3 that I bought from Sonic Boom, used. I have, ooh, I have a uh, Typhoon EP split release that Kyle signed. I love Kyle. Ooh, it's white. <gasps> Pretty. Oh, I have a download. Cool. Um, that's also one thing I really like about buying physical albums is that while you're getting the physical thing, they still know that you there's no way of you getting that on your computer easily. So they send you a download code a lot of times so that you get the physical thing that you get to listen to in your record player, but you can also just like download it on your computer, download it onto your phone. Um, I have a Ravenna Woods EP, Alleyways and Animals. This is another one that was pretty and beautiful and colorful and tie dye and oh my God, look at that coloring. This is like brick. Oh, so pretty. Ooh, I got some soundtracks. Cool. Vision Quest. I bought this at a record store in Bellingham for $6. Very proud of myself. The soundtrack is bomb. It's like the first movie that Madonna's music was in. And that's Matthew Modine. Oh my God, Matthew Modine as a babe. Ooh. Sound City, Sound City that my mother got me for Christmas a couple years ago. Well, several years ago, actually. This was a series of recordings that Dave Grohl and a ton of people put together, like fucking Rick Springfield, Stevie Nicks, Josh Homme, Paul McCartney, a ton of people are just on this. And it's like a big old collection of songs the Beatles, which one is this? I don't even know which Beatles release this is specifically, but it has Hey Jude, Revolution, The Ballad, in, Ballad of John and Yoko, Old Brown Shoe, I Should've Known Better. I bought it at a flea market. Vampire Weekend that was given to me by my sister because she got it as a gift and she hated Vampire Weekend and she was like, why did I get this as a gift? And so I got it. This is Contra. This might be my favorite. Empire Weekend album. Death Cab for Cuties, Transatlanticism. Another one of my faves. I love this album. This might be my only Death Cab record that I have on vinyl, honestly, but I'm not mad about it because this is the best one and it always will be. Anybody ever says otherwise, I will fight you. Because it's perfect. Plans, I'm gonna follow anybody into the dark. Plans was overrated. I have And the War Came by Shaky Graves. Oh, Shaky Graves, I love him. He's so great. This is such a good record. Dearly Departed, Perfect Parts, Hardwired. He's also a beautiful man. I have Adele's 21 that I got after I got 25. Um, it's not open. I should probably open it. Not right now, but. <laughs> Getting down to the wire. Got my favorite Foo Fighters album, The Color and the Shape. So good. My Hero, Monkey Wrench, Everlong, Everlong, AKA one of my favorite songs of all time. Ooh, another Phoenix record, Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix. This is right around when I started listening to Phoenix. So this one also has a special place in my heart because it was my first foray into their music. Listomania, Love Like a Sunset, 1901, Countdown. This, again, I love the artwork. When I have my own house, I'm gonna have the most epic record wall. Ooh. Ooh, I have Frightened Rabbit's Painting of a Panic Attack. This was their last album that they put out before Scott died, which is literally the first song is called Death Dream. So yeah, it's great. Um, this is, this was again, a, one that came out at a very painful time for me. So Get Out particularly was apt. Ooh, this is an even better Menomina release. This album artwork is the weirdest, coolest thing. 
The artwork on this is absolutely bonkers and I love it. This I actually got, I remembered I wanted this particularly on vinyl for the longest time because I have it on CD as well. And I was looking for this, like every record store I went to in whatever city I was in, I would look for this to see if I could find it secondhand and I could not find it. And then one year, I can't remember which one it was. It was one of the vinyl club like monthly subscription things. They put this back into reprint specifically for that. And my friend Renee was part of that. Like she would get the monthly things and she's like, hey, I know you want this. Do you want, like she was gonna get this anyway if she didn't like cancel it for that month. So she was like, do you want this? And I was like, yes, yes I do. And so she got it, I paid her, she sent it to me in the mail and I love her for it. Such a good album, oh my God. All right, I got another La Noah Gunderson record, Carry the Ghost. This is, yeah, this is the one that was before White Noise because Ledges was before this one. Carry the Ghost, this is like a super hefty fucking like some expensive vinyl. I don't remember how much this was. Ooh, I have the Stranger Things soundtrack. I got this for Christmas from my boyfriend a couple of years back. I love him. This one is also tie dyed, I think. Yeah, smoky tie dye. Ooh, it's so cool. Yes, I think this is season one. Season one soundtrack. I have Run the Jewels 2. No, this is RTJ 3. Is this a colored vinyl? Yeah, it's gold. That's what it is. It's gold. I'm super stoked for, for LP4. Ooh, they're like teasing it. And I was like, y'all don't. They could just like bust it out on us at the end of the year because that's what they did with this one. It was like, surprise, here's a new album on like December 20th. Um, I have Phoenix's Bankrupt, which I haven't even opened yet. I need to do that. Laura, I'm sorry. I know, I need to. Ah, uh, No, I got this as a gift. That's what it was. I got this as a gift last Christmas, I think. Yeah, Phoenix, Bankrupt. The album art is always cool. This is Typhoon's last release and oh, it's such a cool concept of album. Like the artwork is like this clear little thing that comes out and then it like goes over the top and it matches and stuff. And are you a different color? God, they really had to go way over the top when it came to packaging with this one. Sometimes it's too over the top and y'all can, I think it's red. This one is red. Y'all had to make this so complicated. This album I got to hear for the first time in a Walkman at sunset at Sculpture Park in the city. It was very cool. The band was doing this little tour where they would do listening parties where people would bring their favorite pair of headphones and then they would just have all these like preloaded Walkman with the album on it. And then they're like, okay, everybody, now everybody can just go find a spot and listen and we're all gonna press play at this one time so that we can all just like have a little listening party but still be in our own little world. And it was super cool. And like, I got to meet some of them and we got to go get beer afterwards. It was just, it was nice. It was very cool. I have Naked Giants Slough. They're working on a new record pretty soon. Actually, I think they just went into the studio. Super excited for those guys. They make me feel inadequate about my own life because they're very young. In Excess is Shabu Shuba. That's a dog on the front, by the way. That is a dog. This one has Don't Change. This one I found at a flea market, as you can see. It's like, it was like $4 or something. And yeah, I like In Excess. Um, I have Nirvana's Bleach that I got as a gift last year from my uncle who uh, saw Nirvana's last Seattle show before Kurt Cobain killed himself all those years ago, which is wild. I have his ticket stub somewhere in a box. Required owning for any Seattle record collector. I have Harvey Danger's Where Have All the Merrymakers Gone. This is the album with Flagpole Sitta on it. 1997, I feel really fucking old. I'm gonna have to put all these back in that milk crate. That's gonna be annoying. And then I have Spoons, Hot Thoughts, exclusive. I, I need to actually see what this record looks like because I didn't open it. What color are you? Just black, just black, but it's Hot Thoughts. There's a remix. Yeah, there's a remix and then there's another track. The album art is just like super cool and weird. Spoon, I love your album artwork. I have Sleater Kinney's No Cities to Love. Ooh, that is a good album. 
I don't know how I feel about the new one. I don't know how I feel about the band without Janet. This, this, this was such a good comeback. Oh my God. When this album came out, I was like, oh shit, this is awesome. Like <laughs> I didn't honestly have a ton of like background with Slater Kenny's music. Like I'd seen them play before. I knew of their music. I went to school on Slater Kinney Avenue in Lacey, Washington for a hot minute, um, which is literally where they practiced. I didn't have so much history with this band, but then when this record came out, I was like, oh, it's so good. Riot Girl was back in action. This one is a set of B-sides. It is from a band called Someone Still Loves You, Boris Yeltsin. And this is a record that was given to me by the guys in the band. And why that is, is because my picture was used in the album art. This photo I took and all the guys signed it and um, not all the same guys are in the band anymore. So this was years ago. What year was this? 2000 and I don't fucking know. I literally don't know how long ago this was. Yeah, this I, I, photo I saw them years ago and then uh, the main dude in the band, Philip, like emailed me and asked if I, they could use my picture in the album art. And this was like, I was like 22, 23 maybe at the time. And I was like, yeah, totally. And like, I don't, I'm not mad that I like didn't ask for money back then because it's like, this is cool little bragging rights that I get. But, and it was like B sides and stuff. Like it wasn't like a new, new release, you know? And if, if somebody asked me now, I would be like money. But um, when I went and saw them, Philip was like, do you want a CD or do you want a record? And I was like, the question is that, of course I want a record, duh. I don't want to take home a CD with my picture in it. I want to take a record with my picture in it, <laughs> duh. Yeah, so I own that now and I'm very proud of it. It's a little bragging rights that I have. Am I missing any? I don't know if I'm missing any. I don't think I'm missing any. Now we're gonna get to my favorite band in the whole wide world. The ones that I have on vinyl. I do not own all of their releases on vinyl. I'm slowly working my way up to it. I don't know if they're going to release all of them later on on vinyl. We are scientists. My favorite band in the whole wide world. The most recent one is Megaplex, signed by Chris and Keith. This is a good record. Not my favorite record from theirs, but it was good. What color is this? And it's white. The album art was kind of like, like it was cool, but it wasn't like that exciting, you know? Helter Seltzer, on the other hand, this was one, um, it's blue. I think most of my Wear Scientist records are colored. Helter Seltzer, a lot of people didn't like. I don't know why. I liked it. Anybody can fight me. Um, In My Head is good. Buckle is great. Classic Love, it, but the artwork on this is really fucking weird. So there's that. I have a pin of this somewhere. I don't know where it is. And then TV en Francais was the album before Helter Seltzer. That's Chris on the back, by the way. Yep, just weird, weird art. I do kind of want to put this on something though. They're weird and I love them. This was a really good record too. This was right around, I feel like this was right around when Keith and his girlfriend at the time broke up. It was a breakup record, so it was naturally gonna be good. Um, why your breakup records are always the best? I don't know. Yeah, this is 2014. Jesus, it was that long ago already? Fuck, I feel old. Yeah, TV en Francais from We Are Scientists. And then I have Business Casual, which is a 12 inch. Are you a color? No, it's black. Um, this was a release they did right before TV en Francais because the artwork is similar vibe, you know, um, similar coloring. And this was kind of like B-sides and versions of songs that were not quite finished. And um, I have two singles that I got on eBay. <laughs> I have It's a Hit, which is a red vinyl, bright red vinyl. It's a Hit and The Great Escape Under the Sea, which is a B-side that they put together on a collection of B-sides later on called Crap Attack. And then I have Nobody Move, Nobody Get Hurt, and History Repeats, also on a hot red vinyl. Yeah, History Repeats is good. I like that track. And then 
Finally, my newest record, which is ironically one of my oldest favorite albums, with Love and Squalor. Is it a different color? No, it's just black. But the artwork is old, it's original. They look like children. I do wanna take this and put it up in my house somewhere though. Like, this needs to be framed. God, they look like such babies. Just, just young men. This is the original lineup of We Are a Scientist uh, with Michael Tapper, Keith Murray, Chris Kane, and um, this was the first album. And they re-released this as like a special release this year. And they're playing some special shows in the UK in December. Um, doing like all we are just all of that record yeah this i'm glad that i own this because this is my like my favorite album like i have this on cd i have a burned version of it where all the songs are in the wrong order when i downloaded everything off winmx hey yo we all know pirating is coming back because fucking a but yeah with love and squalor we are scientists that kind of early 2000s indie pop. When did this come out? Yeah, 2005. 15 years almost. Michael Tapper's no longer in the band. I met him though, playing at a different show. And I told him that I appreciated him and I was like, I've been a fan of yours since we are scientists. Love you. <laughs> um, and these two just fucking know me at this point. I've seen them so many times. They know my name, they know my face. Yeah, so that is my full record collection. I don't think I'm missing any. I think that was all of them. If you are new to any of this music, uh, I will I will make a playlist. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a playlist of all of the things that I have because some of these might be like very obscure and like not on YouTube, but the ones that I can put together, I will make a mass playlist of songs from all of these records. It will take me a while. If it's not immediately posted in the description, it will be. Don't feel the need to harass me about it. Yeah, this is gonna be a very long video and a very long one for me to edit. Obviously there's no particular song of the day because there's so many songs of the day and uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you would like me to do more like deep dives into music, let me know. It might be something where I do like one every so often, cause I know that it's something that not everybody watches my channel for, but I know that there's a handful of you that do really like my music content and I don't want to like stop making it at all. Uh, I do have some like music related things planned for December though, for sure. Um, I will be doing my favorite releases of 2019 as I always do. But um, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Um, thanks to my patrons as always. I will see you all in my next video. Okay, bye.